Uh, hello, I'm Jack Stewart, and I'm going to talk to you today about the concept of aerial reforestation. So basically, this is where you take an aircraft and you plant forests with it. Now, it might seem like a crazy idea to drop trees from an airplane, but it might just work. So first of all, I'd like to talk about why forests are important and why we should even care about them. Well, there's several reasons. For example, they prevent soil erosion, they filter groundwater, they have many natural resources, among other things. But perhaps most importantly, they are one of the best natural ways of uh, fighting against the effects of climate change. So using the process of photosynthesis, uh, the trees will take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and then store it within their plant body and in the surrounding soil. Yet despite their incredible importance, forests are being destroyed on a massive scale worldwide. It's been estimated that every single day, up to 200 uh, square kilometers of forest are cleared worldwide. So I did a calculation, and in a year, that actually turns out to be equivalent to the entire land mass of Scotland in forests is destroyed every single year. So clearly, this is a massive issue that we need to fight against. Uh, and uh, efforts, obviously, must go into preserving the remaining forest land, but that alone is not enough. We must also direct our efforts towards replanting forests that have already been lost. So that's where the concept of aerial reforestation comes in. Uh, this was first proposed in the 1970s, but unfortunately not much has happened with it since then. So basically, a low-flying aircraft will drop thousands and thousands of so-called darts and I've got an example of one of these darts here. This was used in my wind tunnel tests. So as you can see, each dart will have a tree sapling, so basically just a young tree, uh, surrounded by some nutritious soil. And uh, as you can see here, it's got a pointed nose. So when it's dropped from the aircraft, it will, the gravitational force will drive it into the ground and plant it. And the shell surrounding the soil is made out of a biodegradable material, so that once it's in the ground, it will degrade away. So aerial reforestation has several advantages over the traditional manual methods of planting trees. And by that, I mean uh, where a person will go on foot, uh, dig a hole, and plant a tree one at a time. But using an aircraft, uh, forests can be planted at a much faster rate, and uh, locations that are much further away can be reached with an aircraft that couldn't otherwise be reached on foot. So uh, I should note that each dart must be low cost for this to even be successful. So my master's project dealt primarily with the aerodynamics of these darts. So the most important aerodynamic criterion is for stability in flight. And this is for two main reasons. First of all, to ensure accurate dispersion of these landed darts. In other words, so you can predictably uh, determine where these darts are going to land. And secondly, to ensure that the dart lands nose first into the ground and doesn't tumble in flight, because you can imagine if it lands sideways, then the tree won't be uh, planted properly. So with these in mind, I investigated both the influence of different tree types and different fin types and how these affect the stability and the aerodynamics of the darts. So in my project and in aerodynamics generally, there's two main methods of experimentation. First of all is by using what's called a wind tunnel. And this is basically where uh, you pass airflow over a model. And usually you'll insert uh, a material such as smoke. So you can follow where the flow goes and examine the different aerodynamic structures. Uh, so as I already showed you, I used a 3D printed full scale model in the wind tunnel. And the second method is for, by using computer simulations. So in recent years, computers have become very powerful, and they can accurately model complex fluid structures. And as you can see in this picture, uh, the top is the wind tunnel test, and the bottom is an equivalent computer simulation test. So first of all, for different tree types, basically, trees can be categorized into two main structural types. The first is needle leaf tree species, as shown on the left here. And that is characterized by 
many densely packed but very small and slender leaves. Uh, but on the other hand, there's broadleaf tree species, and these are characterized by much fewer but much larger and flat-shaped leaves. Uh, so as you can imagine, the uh, aerodynamics over these different leaf structures will be very much different. And it was also considered to have an optional streamlined covering that can be placed over the tree sapling, which would uh, negate any effects that the leaves would have on the aerodynamics. So after testing, it was found that the broadleaf trees have very poor stability characteristics, and this is due to the very large leaves. Uh, so in that case, it's recommended that a covering be placed over the uh, broadleaf trees. And by the way, the covering will come off once it lands. Uh, but this is deemed not to be necessary for needleleaf trees because they have much better stability characteristics. And next, several different fin types were investigated. Uh, and it was found that fins with longer span have better stability. And by span, I just mean the lateral length of the, lin of the fins. Uh, but other variables were found to be less important. For example, the cord length, which is the longitudinal length, and other variables. Uh, now, I won't bore you with all my results, but here's one that I found fairly interesting. So on the darts, at high angles of attack, and by that I mean uh, the angle of attack is the angle of the dart with respect to the forward velocity. So at high angles of attack, uh, vortices form on one side of the dart. So you can think of vortices as similar to miniature tornadoes forming on this. And the significance of this is it will cause uh, an uneven pressure distribution on the dart, which means that additional forces will be applied, which can destabilize it in flight. So it's recommended to avoid high angles of attack if necessary, I mean, uh, if possible. So uh, by its very nature, aerial reforestation is a multidisciplinary topic. And by that, I mean it involves many different sciences. So here are a few options of uh, more things that can be researched. For example, different materials, especially biodegradable ones. Uh, also botanical work, for example, whether the roots can withstand the impact when the tree lands, and cost and manufacturing analysis, and many more topics. Um, so now before I finish, I want to leave you uh, with an issue, a broader issue to think about. So the reason why I proposed this topic, and in fact what got me into engineering in the first place, was because I thought, perhaps naively, that the whole point of engineering was to use a background of scientific knowledge combined with creative thinking to help make the world a better place. Uh, and as I'm, as I'm sure you're all aware, there's a, a long list of massive global challenges that we're currently facing, and these are only going to get worse as the decades go on. Uh, however, it's becoming clear to me that there's a stark lack of realistic opportunities for engineers who want to work on solving these big issues. But on the other hand, there's plenty of opportunities to work on, uh, and, plenty, and billions of pounds invested into projects, for example, uh, designing the latest combat drone or ballistic missile. And the fact that our society prioritizes these things while trivializing efforts towards more important issues is perhaps a reflection that there's something deeply wrong with the values of our society. So I really hope in the future uh, there can be a shift towards valuing and incentivizing engineering and science for more positive causes. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, that is a good point. Um, 
there could be an issue with predation, uh, but I'm not too sure about the diet of deers and everything, but these, the saplings that are used are, um, they would be grown in a nursery and they'd be perhaps a year old. So by that time they might uh, have less of a chance of being predated. There's also um, what's called aerial seeding, where you just drop seeds from an aircraft instead of saplings. It was actually f uh, tested in Hawaii and it's found that the seeds don't actually go into the ground because it's got uh, less velocity. And uh, the rodent population actually exploded because they were just eating all the seeds. Uh, but at least with uh, saplings, the rodents wouldn't predate it as much. But yeah, deer could be an issue. But again, that would be also an issue if you're planting manually. Like the same, same thing, the plant will, could still be eaten. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, the younger a tree is, the more vulnerable it is. So you want to avoid like, very, very small trees. But again, the larger it is, the more chance it has of uh, being destroyed when it lands. So you do need to get um, in between that. Uh, some tests that were done in the 80s were about this, this size. So I believe that's probably the best sort of size to get, but uh, again, more tests would need to be done to determine that. Um, to go back to the first question, I think um, you might want to test on the area. I think that would you know, keep the deer away from the, from the area in the first place. Uh, so that might be something that you know you want to do. Um, but I was wondering, um, how do you make sure that um, your darts fall exactly where you want them to go and not on the side? So maybe you would have the area where you want to plant them and, and just a uh, field next to it would be private. How do you make sure that the darts fall? Right. Uh, so that's why stability is so important because the more stable it is, the, the more of a chance you'll have of going straight down. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so the question was um, how do you make sure that they fall exactly? Where they oh, right. Um, the yeah, yeah. Um, another way of ensuring that it's more accurate is to have the aircraft flying lower. So say if it was at a kilometer altitude, it'd be kind of hard to guess where the darts would land. But if it was maybe um, 100 meters, for example, obviously you could predict it much better. So yeah. Uh, Ross? Error. Uh, <coughs> I was wondering where the main area is that the, this is kind of actually to be used in. I mean, that was when you first said kind of areas that are difficult to reach. Uh, for manual planting, I assume it was somewhere else, but uh, yeah, what kind of countries, what kind of geographical locations are you kind of looking at? Right, um, the darts are highly adaptable to different plant species or different geographical locations, so it could pretty much be used anywhere. There might need to be small modifications done, but I mean, there's all around the world, deforestation is an issue, so it could be used in North America, it could be used in Scottish Highlands, in Amazonia. There's many options, yeah. So there's no more specifically that you're designing for? Uh, for my design specifically, no. Okay. But as I said, it could be used pretty much anywhere. Yep. Thank you. Um, hi. Um, why can't you put seeds into the darts? As in, uh, still use darts, but instead of a sapling, just a seed? And the Right. Um, I'm not a botanist, so I don't know exactly, but I th as far as I'm aware, um, the older a sapling is, the better chance it has of surviving. So there actually was an idea to use seeds still in a dart, 
Um, but I believe germination is the most vulnerable time of a plant's life, and that's when the seed start, begins to sprout. So after it's passed that stage and survived that, then it's got a much greater chance of surviving to maturity. So, yeah. Right, uh, yeah. So that's why it's so important for the material to be biodegradable and preferably thin. So it might sound a bit basic, but cardboard or just thick paper is actually a good material for this. So once it lands, uh, assuming the soil is, uh, has a high moisture, it should degrade within a few days. And by that time, the, the roots will just pass through the shell. Thank you very much again. Uh, thank you.